we're going to need is a programming lead now these are fairly cheaply available i think this was about uh, seven or eight pounds on ebay it's got uh, an rj45 uh, connected at one end and uh, usb on the uh, the other here um, this particular leads fits all of the icon commercial rigs that i've got the 510 the 610 the 5022 and the 5062 and 6062 that I, I use in the shack. Um, now the software as I've already said is pretty much available online. Shouldn't actually cost you anything. So what we'll do, we'll plug my ICOM 510 in, my VHF rig or one of my VHF rigs. And I'll show you how to read it on the software. Uh, obviously what we need to do, and there's the... 510 there is switch it on so just let it switch on and then I'll be plugging the um, programming lead in here and plugging it into my computer and then he'll join me uh, when we look at the software okay I've plugged in the um, programming lead both to the ICOM rig and the other end obviously into the PC You'll now see I'm in control panel and on Windows 10 and device manager because the first thing I need to establish is what COM port the programming lead is uh, plugged into. And you can see here it's actually COM6, this prolific USB to serial. So COM6 we're looking for, we can close that down. Um, on the software we need to set the COM port. And let's just put 6 in there. Now then, what I need to do first, or what is best to do first, whenever you get a new transceiver, is to read what's on there. Number one, it can be quite interesting. You see what frequencies the radio's been used on before. Number two, I've had one or two of these where it was impossible for some reason to write anything to them, but reading from them first seemed to solve that problem. So it's always best practice to actually read from the transceiver all we have to do is press the read button up there and you hear the rig uh, beeping and there it is it's uh, it's now reading the information it's not the fastest of processes I'll put a uh, little video up there of the reader on the transceiver because the transceiver comes up and tells you it's uh, cloning so we'll put that uh, we'll put that up so you can see if you've got that display on your rig you know things are uh, things are going okay comes through every channel a couple of beeps there just to um, confirm that everything's uh, red and we should be ready to see what's on our transceiver. So let's open up memory channels. Let's go for bank one because um, I think that's the only bank I use when I program this radio. And there we go. So there are all the frequencies that I've programmed into the radio. You see for each column there's a receive and transmit frequency where you see a little arrow like that the rx and tx frequencies are identical so they're simplex channels uh, you can see where i've got repeaters programmed in here i've got the receive frequency and i've got a separate transmit frequency 600 kilohertz down i've got a tone ctcss tone here again the arrow means a similar tone or sorry not similar but the same tone on transmit and receive they're programmed in deviation you can set as wide or narrow but you can override this you can program a button on the radio if you wish to switch to uh, wide when the transceiver defaults to narrow you can do that and i'll show you that in a moment the text um, is whatever you want the display to say so in most cases you'll see i've simply put the frequency of the channel in there uh, in the case of repeaters i put the call sign of the repeater and so on uh, but it's up to you whatever you want to put in there you can the compander i would leave alone that i believe affects the tx uh, transmit audio but i i wouldn't touch that 
timeout timer so you can actually set um, a, a timer so that the transmit side of the radio will, will time out after however many seconds you want but uh, for our purposes we'd normally leave that blank you can select RF power that the default power for each channel um, if you leave that on high which is what I've done here the reason I've done that is because in the programmable buttons I can override that by pressing uh, one of the buttons on the front of the radio if we go down to the common setting here okay we can see some other settings um, and these are the button settings so you've got uh, P0 to P4 on the front of the radio and you've also got two um, up and down buttons one on the left one on the, on the right you see on my radio I've set the left up button to wide and narrow switching and the downward button to high and low power switching and then the right hand buttons are just channel up and channel down and I've programmed P0 to um, defeat the squelch I've got P1 and P2 as scan buttons uh, P3 will send um, an automatic a DTMF code which could be useful if you're using a, an echo link node or something like that and P4 um, allows you to change certain parameters on the transceiver and that's the only flexibility you've got it's not much you can change microphone you press P4 give it a long press and that allows you to switch between uh, microphone gain settings the backlight intensity settings and squelch settings I think those are the three sort of usable features on P4 so you can actually alter this the squelch you can alter the backlight and you can alter the mic gain and um, I've just got an opening display with my call sign there you could set that to anything or nothing as you wish um, I've got the um, various settings for RF power so you can switch RF power if I wish uh, individually uh, by each channel um, we'll come on to the hanger actions these are to do with um, scanning but one of the downfalls if you like of the older uh, icon rigs the 510 and 610 in particular is in order for the scan to work the microphone the um, hanger tab on the back of the microphone has to be grounded and I'll, I'll, I'll show you that uh, at the end of the video but um, if you don't ground that or you don't modify the mic so that that um, wire is permanently grounded the radio won't scan so I hope that gives you a little bit idea of the program you can see it it's fairly straightforward and uh, if we were to add an extra frequency in here you can see how that would work what we would then do when we've programmed everything up what I first suggest you do if you've just read the transceiver as we have here is that you save the file just give it a name I'll call that uh, original it's a very original name and save it so now that piece of programming is saved if something goes wrong with the radio and it loses its, its memory or we have another radio we want to program identically we can just load that up um, and um, if we do something in here and it doesn't work we've got the original one saved if we want to write back to the radio it's uh, again a very uh, simple process it's just a button push on the radio or it's not, not on the radio on the software and uh, we'll just uh, go up to the top here and you can see um, it says clone write we press that we get that dialog box up asking us to confirm that we wish to um, write to the transceiver so we'll just okay that and you hear the be rig is beeping and it's cloning each uh, memory as it goes takes a little while you can see the countdown bar
once it's finished we should get a double beep from the transceiver or just to confirm okay so that's all written up so that's the software and that's the radio in action you get a clone okay message um, um, so you, yeah you get a clone okay message and we're all done so I hope that's been a little bit of insight and we'll have a little quick look at the peculiarities of the scanning in just a moment okay so just a, a quick word on the scanning situation you can program a button of course on the front of your radio I've got a long press on the P1 puts my radio into scan mode but it doesn't matter how you program these in software okay whatever you do with the 510 and the 610 certainly in my experience the radio will not scan unless you ground the microphone so I mean this uh, hanger tab whatever you want to call it slots into the microphone hanger that has to be grounded once it's grounded the radio will actually scan the display will come on and say scan one scan two whichever bank you program you'll see it's it's now gone back to the previous because it's not actually scanning if I had this grounded it would stay with the scan legend on the display but unlike the armature radio transceivers we're used to it doesn't scroll through the frequencies all you will see on the screen is scan one or scan two whichever you're doing um, and then the radio will stop when it finds a signal and it will display that channel so you'll get the display of the channel that it's received it'll stop on that one but whilst it's scanning it will just say scan one scan two whichever bank you're scanning I just thought I'd add that. Um, it frustrated me at first. I, I thought there was something wrong with my radio. I thought there was something wrong with my programming. But all I needed to do was to ground that mic. And uh, if you're using a non-standard or non-icon mic, you might have an additional problem because I've got one of those. And uh, on the replacement mic, uh, this was not wired to anything. So with that mic, the rig simply wouldn't scan. So just a little, little hint if you're using one of these.